Are you reading the rules? Yeah. Uh, no high heels. That's not a good idea. Or flip flops. No high heels. Yeah. We forgot our emergency shelter and an apple. We're supposed to bring an apple. Not a cliff bar? It says an apple. Oh. Yeah, everyone's got it wrong. I think cliff bars are the rage for a hike. But water and an apple. Last time aboard Freedom, Sean and I crossed the Strait of Georgia, saying goodbye to Vancouver Island and hello to downtown Vancouver, where we'll be staying for the next several weeks. We couldn't be happier to be back in one of the best cities for boaters. We even stayed somewhere new for a change, in False Creek. It's home to the Granville Market, the incredible Yale Town neighborhood, Keyside Marina, and just about everything we could have asked for. Except the snow, of course. If you missed it, be sure to check it out. Now we're getting ready to untie our lines and head off on a weekend getaway to a nearby destination that's been on our cruising bucket list for years. Today it's supposed to be warmer. It's in the upper 30s right now, but it's supposed to be in the 40s, which will be great and uh, I think we might even get some sunshine this weekend, which would be a nice change because not too long after we arrived here in Vancouver, it snowed and then it froze. It melted and then it froze. So we've been like, it's been like an ice slick all over the dock. Today's the first day we're getting some melting, which is great. Uh, we can actually get our lines um, and hopefully untie the boat pretty easily. So yeah, we're gonna wrap up our coffee this morning and get underway. Vancouver, we will see you in a couple days. Fun to cruise in new places, see new things. Be right in the heart of downtown Vancouver. It'll be a fun cruise today. We're going to circle around the city. False Creek comes in on the south side of the city. We're going to go into uh, Brard Inlet, Blue Skull, which is on the north side of the city. And then we're going to take that all the way up the Indian Arm, which is kind of a fjord that cuts through the mountains. So it should go from a city landscape to a pretty scenic landscape. And it's not that far of a trip. It's about 30 miles in total. Um, it's actually less than that all the way to the top of Indian Arm, but I think we're going to jog about a third of the way back uh, for our anchorage spot tonight. And the other thing we're going to accomplish this weekend is, uh, since it's been so cold, the marina has their water turned off. So uh, we're going to turn our water maker on and make water. So it's nice to uh, know that we have a backup way of getting our tanks filled up when the marina shuts their water off. Yeah. So it'll be a productive trip and a fun trip. And then tomorrow in Deep Cove, there's supposed to be a really nice uh, hiking trail. It's a nice manicured trail up to the top of, uh, I don't know, I think it's like a rock and a nice lookout. So I think tomorrow we'll drop the dinghy and uh, go check that out before heading back to the city.
that's a winter hat or a swim cap? Winter hat. Oh my gosh. At least they're, you know, trying to stay warm. Sweetie, does that get you in the mood for our polar plunge again this year? Oh yeah. If they can do it, we can do it. One of these years I'm going to jump in though and my heart's going to stop. If that happens, it means it's meant to be. I guess so. What's yeah. the water, 45 degrees here? 45, that's cold. Yeah, that's bad. You got all the boats anchored up. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Way to change the subject. <laughs> Just cruising in and around downtown Vancouver makes for a great day out on the water. Between the backdrop of mountains, the eye candy anchored in English Bay, the iconic Lions Gate Bridge jetting out of Stanley Park, and the many attractions in Vancouver Harbor, there's plenty to keep your eyes entertained. As we got closer to the entrance into Indian Arm, we realized that we forgot to check on one critical piece of information that could potentially end today's trip. Think we're gonna make it? I don't know, I'm looking for um, some clearance markings on the bridge. It's supposed to be 35 feet and I would assume that's at like a high-ish tide. The tide right now is at 11, and it goes up to 15, so I, I, mean, I don't know if that's marked closer to the 15 side of things. Right. So it's uh, questionable. <laughs> we'll keep our eyes peeled for a clearance sign. I'll just kind of nose up to it and see what it looks like. Usually they'd have something marked, kind of right around there. But uh, I think we're just gonna chance it, and <laughs> I'll wait out here and see if Freedom looks like she's gonna clear. Oh, I see Sean talking on the phone, or talking on the radio. Hopefully he's getting some intel on the bridge. Okay, I don't see good looks on his face. Oh boy. This is stress. Oh, I think we're good. Oh, we have so much room. There's probably 10 feet. just from here. Indian Arm is a glacial fjord, a long narrow inlet with steep cliffs created by a glacier. 
Formed during the last ice age tens of thousands of years ago, Indian Arm cuts through the communities of Belkara to the east and North Vancouver to the west, before opening up into an impressive mountainous wilderness not usually found this close to a big city. It wasn't until June of 1792 that this waterway was mapped by Captain George Vancouver and then fully explored a few days later by Dionisio Alcala Galliano. slopes along Indian Arm are either heavily forested or granite cliffs, so the area has seen little to no development. However, about halfway up the arm on the east side lies Bunsen Bay, which is home to two old power plants, aptly named Bunsen No. 1 and Bunsen No. 2. When approaching from the south, you can't miss Bunsen No. 2. Built in 1912 by the BC Electric Railway, Number 2 once produced 27,000 kilowatts of power. Despite being shut down for decades now, this gothic-looking building has become a popular filming location, making cameo appearances in scary movies like Roxanne, Lake Placid, and Freddy vs. Jason. Just north of Number 2 is Bunsen Number 1. Built in 1903 to provide electricity for the Vancouver area's streetcars, this plant originally housed four 1500 kilowatt generators before expanding to a 55,000 kilowatt generator and a larger turbine in 1951. Bunsen No. 1 remains BC's oldest functioning hydroelectric power plant, operated by remote control from BC Hydro's system control facility located atop Burnaby Mountain. A fun fact about these buildings is that they were designed by the famous English architect Francis Rattenbury, who also designed the Empress Hotel and Parliament buildings in Victoria, as well as the Vancouver Art Gallery, to only name a few of his most iconic endeavors in British Columbia. Continuing north, you'll find increasingly more breathtaking views, as well as several small waterfalls, with the largest being Granite Falls. They're easy to miss, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled. Woohoo! We got a waterfall! End of Indian Arm. That's the end of it right there. So beautiful back here. And that's the Royal Vancouver Yacht Club outstation, I believe. I think it's actually like a hotel. I think you can rent rooms if you're a member. So it's pretty remote out here. It's pretty beautiful. Uh, definitely worth the day trip. Definitely worth the day trip. So now we're gonna whip it around and go back down the arm and go to Deep Cove for the night and then maybe a hike in the morning and who knows, we'll see. Originally opened as a luxury German beer garden resort and fishing lodge in 1910, the Wigwam Inn is currently owned and operated by the Royal Vancouver Yacht Club as an outstation for members only. There's no public moorage or reciprocity with other yacht clubs, but don't let that get you down if you were hoping to come. It's rumored that the Wigwam was Al Capone's hideout during his heyday and that it's haunted by all of the victims that he murdered there. So on that note, I think we'll be on our way. morning is so nice it's cold but it's 
so pretty. It's kind of eerie too with, with the fog. But the fog is lifting. So maybe in an hour or two, we will get the dinghy down and go for our hike. We're ready. Gonna be warm enough? Oh, yeah. You have your gloves? No. No? I have pockets. You have pockets? Yeah. All right. We're heading into town. I'm guessing it's called the town of Deep Cove. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we'll go with that. Cool. We'll go with Deep Cove. Yeah, we're gonna hit up the trail and then there's some uh, five star rated sandwich shop and a bakery and cafe. I know, Martha, it's so exciting those cinnamon donuts. How, do you, I... think it, how do you think it got its name, Deep Cove? Um, I'm guessing it's deep here. Yes, it's like 125 feet. So we have all of our chain out. Um, are we gonna hose it down with our water situation or no? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, we're, we're gonna. Pretty good on water. Yeah, we've been making water for the last 24 hours, so we've been kind of keeping up with everything. Yeah. I know, Martha. So exciting. All this excitement and so pretty. Look how pretty. Deep Cove sure is pretty. Luckily, Sully is such a great dinghy captain. He navigated safely all the way to the public dock and even sniffed out the downtown area and nearby entrance to the trail that leads up to Quarry Rock. Are you reading the rules? Yeah, uh, no high heels. That's not a good idea. Or flip flops. No high heels? Yeah. We forgot our emergency shelter and an apple. Supposed to bring an apple. Not a cliff bar? It says an apple. Oh. Yeah, everyone got it wrong. I think cliff bars are the rage for a hike. But water and an apple. We don't have a whistle either. You have a whistle? No. Flashlight? No, we never come prepared. I know. No. We're just gonna die hiking someday. And tell someone uh where you're going and when you plan to be back. We didn't do that either. <laughs> File like a float plan, a hike plan. Huh. So people can send out the uh search crew. Well, ladies, a word to the wise. If you come and hike to Quarry Rock, leave those heels at home. Luckily, I have, like, no heels, so I don't have to worry, but FYI. Today's hike was approximately two hours round trip. Although the trail is classified as easy and has a lot of planked walkways, which is always nice, we found it to be a bit more rugged and tiring than expected. But once we made it to the top, the incredible views made it all worth it. Before pulling up our anchor and heading back to Vancouver, we made sure to grab a sandwich and what they call Vancouver's best hummus from the dip company. Both were out of this world delicious, so if you find yourself hungry in Deep Cove, be sure to check it out.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you're new here, and hit that little notification bell so you won't miss next time when we say goodbye to Vancouver and hello to even more incredible cruising destinations right here in beautiful British Columbia. We'll see you next time.